Oh, I think it's uh, just our practices are probably a little bit longer, maybe a little bit more physical. Uh, I don't know. I wasn't here in the past, so I can't really answer for that, just, just from what they tell me. Uh, and I also think the in, just the intensity of everything that we do is, is just ramped up, and it has to be because it's urgent right now. The first game is uh, just a little over two weeks away, and uh, obviously every game on our schedule looks looks like a challenge, so we have to be ready to play each and every week. Are you ahead or behind where you thought? I think we're right about where I thought we would be. Some days we look ahead and some days we look a little bit up, a little bit behind. Uh, each phase of our team, one day the special teams really excites me, another day it's the defense, another day it's our offense. Uh, but being able to put all three phases together day in and day out, we haven't been able to do that yet. And hopefully by the end of this week or early next week we'll start doing that. Well, I, I, our quarterback situation right now, I would say that Mike White, Wegson is a clear-cut number one. It doesn't mean he's going to start the opener. He's got great competition from A.J. Doyle, but A.J. Doyle is a true freshman. He's only been on campus here for a couple of weeks. To say that he's going to get the ball first against the University of Connecticut, that's a big challenge for any young man. But I think our quarterbacks are grasping the system much, much better than they did in the spring. Uh, Mike Wegson is a tremendously confident young man. Our staff has confidence in him. We'll hone the offense to set his, to meet his skill set once the games get going, and I think he's going to be fine. Are you a one quarterback guy? I'm not afraid of using two quarterbacks. I'd rather not. But if uh, if if the two are close, and I'll use both of them until we can really settle on one. It's a long season. Are they the same? Are they, are they very similar in their styles? Or by using two different, these two guys, are they different? Uh, there's not a dramatic difference, but one has uh, one has clearly differentiated skills from the other, and both of them bring something a little bit different to the table. What makes you say that Wags is your clear number one? Though? What is well, the just the way he handles the offense day in and day out. Uh, his uh, passing efficiency, his checks, uh, his poise, all of that stuff, Mike is clearly ahead of AJ. Not that AJ doesn't have the talent, he just doesn't have all the intangibles fully honed yet, ready to go out there on the field against big time competition. Has your offense adjusted well to what you want them to do? Figuring it out? Uh, yeah, and right now we're really just kind of going through the same things we did in the spring, so it's kind of like a, a review, so to speak. Uh, once we start really implementing the offense uh, and putting it against defense, uh, Connecticut's defenses and Connecticut's uh, team, then it may, it may take some more work. But I think we're right where we need to be. Defensively, how do you feel about what this team is right You know, we have really good team speed. Uh, they play really hard. They swarm to the ball. Uh, will they do it in the games? I'd like to think so. Usually what you see on the practice field is what you see in the games. When's the, uh, when's the date change from camp to uh, we're going to uh, take camp all the way through next Thursday, uh, and then Friday we'll start really start uh, honing in on UConn. You talk about uh, Rob Blanchflower's <clears throat> skill set and how he's going to fit into the new offensive scheme. Well, Rob is uh, he he's more what I would call a traditional tight end. He's about 260 pounds. He doesn't have great vertical speed, but he has he has enough to win with. Uh, he's he blocks as well as he catches and runs. Um, I'd like us to have our tight ends maybe run a little faster, be a little bit taller, catch a little better. But who wouldn't, you know? So uh, he's doing just fine. And he's a great leader. Gosh darn, is he a great leader, and he's a tough kid. Running backs, um, how much do you use your running backs in your offense? Is it 50, 50, 60, 40? Well, I think the game will dictate that. And uh, the old adage uh, will certainly hold true for us. Take what the defense gives. So if they allow us to run the ball, we'll do that. We'll run the heck out of the football if, if the looks are right. Uh, I'm very, very confident in our run game, our offensive line. Uh, today had a, had a uh, number of good run periods today. Uh, the running backs uh, are, are good with their reads. They run tough. They run behind their pads. I think our run game is going to be better than expected. You mentioned the talent gap that you kind of know going in is going to be there. What's a realistic goal for this year? Well, uh, you know, as, I can't tell you how many games we're going to win. How would I know that? Right. I knew we wouldn't play. Okay, maybe not a win <laughs> total, but, but in terms of what, what are your goals this year? What is something that you're Well, the, the, some of the goals, you know, the most important things that I want to do is lay, lay down a foundation for our football program. And I use the metaphor like this. If you, you know, living here in New England is really interesting. There's even right here in, in uh, Western Mass, there's so many houses that were built in the 1600s. And why are these houses still standing today? Because they have great foundations. So they're able to withstand the test, test of time. They're able to weather the storm. Storm, that's the same kind of football program that we want to build. So we're putting our foundation down first. At the end of the year, if the foundation is solid, I'm going to feel really, really good, and so will our staff. So you're going to coach this program for 400 years? But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be lucky if I make it another 10. <laughs> Taking over a program, 
how how do you feel you're at it with the head coaching level at this point? Uh, how is everything going for you in that regard? Well, it, it, you know, I think I'm more than ready for it. You know, I've been around the block a few times, so from that standpoint, there's no real surprises for me. Uh, it's just how I utilize my time and my time management because I love to watch video. I mean, most coaches do, or, and uh, I want to spend as much time as I can watching video, but I'm, I'm torn and pulled in a lot of different directions, so I have to really manage my time and and, uh, and then say it's time to turn off the uh, video and move on to the next thing. That's the hardest part for me because I'd rather just really watch film than fill out papers all day. Jumping off his question, how much different has it been, you being the head coach without getting into a game, than maybe you know all those years when you thought that you might be a head coach? Well, the, the, the uh, how is it different, like day yeah, to day? Like, or? You know, your thoughts, you know, you, you must have thought what, oh, what it's okay, going to be like yeah, to be a yeah. head coach. You know, I'm, I'm sitting out there at practice and I'm looking and I'm thinking about What's our travel roster going to be? You know, who are the guys that are going to make it? You know, what guys are special teamers, uh, but they don't play on offense and defense, and, and we may have to leave those guys off the bus. Thus, the work we're giving them in special teams may be kind of a waste of time because they may not travel. So nobody's thinking about that except the head coach. So I'm constantly talking to the defensive coaches and the offensive coaches. Where do we think this guy fits into our plans? In the past, I never worried about that. It just wasn't in my, wasn't in my, wasn't on my radar. Did you have a moment either in the spring or here during camp where you just kind of realized, God, I made it. I'm a head coach of an FBS record. Well, I don't think I've made it yet. That's uh, Let me win a game or two, then I'll tell you if I made it. But uh, I, I feel good. Anytime I reach a, a personal goal, I feel good. But I then I just feel this need to go right on to the next thing. You know, it's not that I've, I'm a head coach now. I know I'm, uh, I've, I've accomplished all my life goals. I'm not even close. So this is just the beginning of the next goal that I'd like to accomplish. How's the next goal? Next goal? Have a have a top twenty football team and go to a BCS game and win it. That's my that's my next goal. How's the depth look on in tight end? I know you had a player. Uh, you know we've got numbers. It doesn't mean though that we have a lot of players with great skill, winnable skill. Uh, but we we've got enough guys to practice, enough guys for the scout team, uh, enough guys that I can put in a game and win. No, I don't. I don't have enough. Uh, do you think um, do you think Lance Law is going to be the starter? I know it probably just yeah, he'll be the, the starter. Formation. Yeah, unless something yeah. crazy happens between now and uh, two weeks from now. Yeah, he'll be the starter. Clear cut. What have you seen out of uh, Michael Cox and uh, the unlockable transfer guys at UC? Uh, yeah, yeah, they're about everything we expected them to be. And, and obviously, I knew Dion very well, so I knew what I was getting there. Uh, Mike Cox has just been a, a really great, really great addition to our football program. He comes to work every single day, virtually never misses a rep. Uh, he's tough, he can catch the ball, uh, blocks well, uh, and they're very, very diligent in learning his assignments and wants to win. You know, he's a real team guy. A lot of times a guy comes in like that and uh, they, they may have a different mindset than what you're trying to develop with your football program, but he's all in. He's all in to be a team player, to be a minute man. If he's a starter, the second or the third, he'll be, he won't be happy if he's not the starter, but he'll accept his role. Charlie, these are all new guys to you, but since the spring, you gotten a, a pretty good idea of what you could expect you know, from them in terms of, as you call it, winnable skill. Just in camp, uh, are there like particular guys who have really kind of jumped out, caught your eye, you know, maybe uh, or gave, you, gave you the idea that uh, you got something special? Yeah, I think there's, uh, there's really one guy on offense right now, Tajay Sharp. Uh, I, I kind of knew he was going to be that kind of guy, but to have him actually come out and demonstrate it day in and day out, really, really exciting. Uh, I think he's going to be really good. Uh, I, I thought that Stacy Bedell was showing that early. Uh, then he was, he's been tweaked for a little bit, and he's only been kind of uh, half in and half out. So I, he hasn't taken that next big step forward. Uh, on the offensive line, I, I think there's a freshman a guy named Mike Bowen who's really stepped up the last two days. Uh, can a true freshman start on the offensive line? I don't think so, but he, he's ready to, you know, he looks like he's getting closer to be a backup. Then on defense, we've got uh, uh, two corners I really like, uh, Trey Dudley-Giles and Demetrius Nicholson. Both those guys uh, are bona fide 1A football players, and we're very, very fortunate to have them. A linebacker, Jovan Knox, is really, uh, Santos Knox is really playing well during this camp, so I would expect him to get some time too.